Hey guys, this is Javan Joel. I am the lead developer of CloudGunk, and I'm also a .NET developer. I've been in the world of .NET for over 16 years since .NET pretty much came out. Um, we develop all our tools in ASP.NET, MVC. We work a lot in Azure and host in Azure. And I feel like there's a lot of things I could uh, um, help you guys with. Specifically in this video, I'm gonna talk about Azure Media Services. Throughout all my career, this is one of the biggest bitches I've had to work with. I mean, the documentation is scattered all over the place. The answers I was getting wasn't particularly pertained to my situation. Uh, it took me a few weeks to get this project done. Um, so basically, we're going to show you how to set up Azure Media Services, how to um, upload and encode assets, how to queue jobs, media reserve units, everything you need to know to upload a video, get it encoded, and get it playing on all devices, the web, and, and uh, iPhone, Android, all that good stuff. So this is, is going to be long. So I'm splitting this up into a few videos. This is just part one, getting you guys set up. So I'm going to go ahead and get right into it. Okay, so as you can see, we're in the Azure portal, um, and what we want to do is we want to set up a couple of things. The first thing is we want to set up a media service and then a streaming endpoint. A streaming endpoint basically allows us to stream video from the media service onto our end device. So, first thing we'll do is we'll create a new resource, and you want to search for media service. Um, and select media service and click on create. I already have a media service created so I'm not going to create it now, I'll just open up mine and as you can see I have my streaming endpoint here. You could have one or multiple streaming endpoints. You just click on the plus sign to add a new endpoint, give it a name, um, and then you could select the type, standard or premium. I'm not going to go into that, standard is useful for most cases. You could enable a CDN, keep that enabled by default. Um, you could use an existing CDN, which I do have one, and you could select to automatically start the, uh, the endpoint. It's important to note that when you start the endpoint, um, it automatically starts charging you. So there's a couple more sections. This is the asset section, and then this is the media reserve unit section. This section allows you to basically say, how many units do I want to process video? And it could be anywhere from zero, all the way up to multiple and they are at different speeds. As you can see, the faster the speed, the quicker it encodes the video, the more cost that it actually is to run it. We actually uh, have a job processing that automatically turns these on and off, which I'll show you right now. I have this service, a media encoder service that's running. And what we do is we check for any media that is, is gonna be processed. Uh, we call this function ensure media reserved units which basically says alright I have these many videos that need to be processed so I need to set and activate the encoding units. I'll go ahead and show you how that looks. Um, you can see the encoding units basically actually calls the reserved units in Azure, sets the new unit count and calls the update function. This basically does the same thing I showed you in the portal which sets the encoding units to be active and allows video to be processed. Okay, so that's it guys. That's all it takes to uh, get you initially set up. Again, the steps are you want to set up a media service. You have to enable at least one streaming endpoint. As soon as it's enabled and running, it's going to charge you. It's approximately 60 bucks a month at the time of this video to run a streaming endpoint. And it's basically that's what serves your video from Azure into the client and device. You need those guys running. You could have one or multiple of them. Then you need media reserved units. And what media reserved units allows you to do is basically say, uh, as a video is processing, I have these units reserved to prepare to process those videos. Every time these guys are running, it's going to charge you, which is why we created a service that turns them on and off so that it's not constantly charging us for reserve units when video isn't processing. Um, if, if you guys are just encoding videos in one shot, you could just turn on re reserve units in the portal, encode the video, and shut them down. Um, or if you have the money, just keep them on and process them all you want. But anyway, in part two, I'll show you now how to actually process assets, and we'll talk about that next time. Hope you guys like this video. Let me know what you think, if this is enough information, if, if, this, guy, if this helped you out at all. All right, take care.